Yo, GBA fans, how's it going? My name is Slyro, and I am here with... Super Gassy, hello. And we are going to be bringing you the GBA Week 9 recap in place of Raikwin and Adam just for this week. Uh, they should hopefully be back again next week? Oh. Question mark? God forbid we have to do this <laughs> another week. Oh, I know, right? So, anyway, <laughs> um, we're just going to get in... To the games, I'm going to put that in quotation mark because the first one uh, is going to be Steve and the Milwaukee Sauce Bucks versus uh, Miguel Mega Mogwai and the Real Maril. And that is a game that uh, didn't happen because, uh, for those of you that don't know, Magnitude, uh, he forfeited. he's forfeiting his last two games because he's moving on to other things, not enough time, all that good stuff. Um, so how that is going to Rest count... Rest pizza, Steve. Yeah, basically... Basically, <laughs> and how that's going to work is uh, it's just going to go as a 3-0 victory for uh, Mega Mogwai and the Real Maril. It's going to be a 3-0 victory for them, um, and that is basically it for that game. So we, <clears throat> you want to go ahead and talk about the next game? Uh, yeah, let's get into the next one. Uh, we had Nips versus Hank, um, the Long Island Reggie Rockies versus the Winnipeg Aqua Jets. And let me look at my notes here. I mean, I really, it was just a game of uh, going back and forth, trying to bring in Excadrill to basically get kills, and it was, um, there was that moment where you had Umbreon, and you had, um, what was it? What did he have out? Oh, I'm crumbling here. <laughs> <laughs> Which moment? Um, when he had the Umbreon out, and I think Nips had his, what was it? It was probably either Mandibuzz or Quagsire, because that was a matchup. It was Quagsire, it was Quagsire. There we go. That was That's what I was thinking of. Yep. Thank you. And he was trying to get the Scald. He was going for the Scald, and Hank was really hoping he would get the Scald burn with the Synchronize. And it just wasn't happening for him. So, um, in the end, it was just Excadrill who saved the day by being Scarfed and basically outspeeding everything else and earthquaking everything to death um, for the win. And, um, you know... Oh, what did we see? Did we see a Cotton Guard Altaria this week, or yep. was it? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cotton Guard yeah. was brought again, again and almost successful. Again, Nips. Oh, almost, almost, almost successful. But then uh, yeah. Excadrill, Ironhead flinched, and Altaria just had nothing to do after that. Yeah. And uh, Mega Pincer, no kills this week. Not, I think true. he just sacked it off to. No, I I don't think so. I think he was trying to uh, to scare Nips out, if I remember correctly. But Nips wasn't scared out and just went kamikaze and was like, I can live one, I'll take you out, I know you're going to take me out, and just yeah. went with it for his blaze again. Um, yeah. Which is great, so. Yep, so you can jump into the match with the Piratatas. <laughs> yes, the Pittsburgh Piratatas. Piratatatatatatas, whatever. And uh, versus A Drive, uh, Dan and the St. Louis Rampartis, they had their uh, rematch they played once earlier this season where A Drive won. And A Drive again did pick up the victory. Uh, this one was a 3 0 um, in Dan's favor. And um, <clears throat> basically, I mean, they both played well. I think Tuff got off to a bad start, leading with uh, Tornadius and getting ice punched and instantly O code. Um, you would have thought that maybe he learned about Ice Punch Nuda Queen from the last match where yeah. the Ice Punch o code the Salamence, but I guess not. He really thought that Dan was going for rocks, and he just lost a little bit of momentum, and Dan just played really, really well after that and just didn't really give Tup an opportunity to come back. Um, after that play, I would say that both sides played well, um, but Dan just played better, had you know, the better team in the end, knew what he needed to preserve, and, uh, yeah, he ended up clinching the division and the number one overall seed, so he gets a week one bye for the playoffs, so congrats to him. Yeah, it was, it was really a shame that Tup went straight for the Hurricane and thought that Dan was going to go for the Stealth Rocks, and that just blew my mind, because, uh, if you're predicting the Stealth Rock stuff, you kind of go for the U-turn and you go into Alakazam. And that's kind of that was kind of my thought process watching it. And I was thinking, oh god, Tup, like you screwed up again. And I was really I was really rooting for him this time around because it was a really close match the last time if he had just brought yeah. the Choice Band Azumarill, which he brought this time around. And 
Yeah, we might as well get into the next one here, I guess. Uh, yep, yeah, go for it. There's, uh, oh, yeah, this game, go for it. <laughs> oh, this game. Um, so we had the New Orleans Pelipers versus the Utah Jasmine this week. And, whoa, what just happened there? And we had, <laughs> sorry, we had um, a very, very, I mean, I don't know what to call it <laughs> other than just dominating. Uh, you know, you... You had John, who thought, who knew actually that Empoleon could live that earthquake from Charizard, and go for the roar and get it out of there. Yeah. But then John just had nothing to stop it once it got a Dragon Dance up, and the earthquake crit, and it was just game from there. I mean, there's nothing you could really do to a plus one plus one Charizard, and ah. Uh... Yep. It was just such a shame to see him just go down in flames like that. But I mean, we got to see special Agron this week. Yes. Shout out to I mean, shout out to Sorcerer Agron working his magic Sorcerer from the bench. Sorcerer Agron. Yes. Just working his magic and it was a it was a very dominating 2-0, which is weird to say because yeah. you think 2-0 and you think, "Oh, that was a close match." No. Yeah. Well, Cooper <laughs> yeah. Cooper could have definitely gotten a 4-0, but he just really wanted to show off his he special really Aggron. He really sorcerer Aggron. And Even... he missed uh, two sings at the end, I think, with his Blissey. <laughs> if he would have hit a sing with the Blissey, then he could have gotten a 3-0, but then he just sacked Blissey off so he could just oh, take out the last Pokémon with I forget what it was. But <laughs> yeah, it could have been over quicker, but uh yeah. Cooper just had to show off everything, which I mean, he definitely had a right to. Not many people would, you know, be ballsy enough to bring special aggro on to a GBA match. So that's, yeah, that's even, amazing. Even on my screen, instead of aggro on, it's a special aggro on. It has to be mentioned. <laughs> it has to be mentioned for Cooper's sake. Yeah, absolutely. So, so good job to Cooper for uh, not letting John get the best of him again. But, uh, you know, it happens, John. You got to... Uh, yeah, let's get on to the next one. Let's stop talking about this. <laughs> <Let's>... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the uh, the next game here, we have uh, Crimson Seabad and the Detroit Steel Wings picking up the 1-0 victory over the San Francisco Giantes with uh, a lot of help from that Scarfed Jolteon picking up four kills. And uh, this was, you know, a really close match. Um, they both did well. I think, I think Geo basically had the match the entire way through up until Scarf Jolteon outsped the Mega Swampert and then Geodis didn't have anything to come back after that and uh, so yeah I, that was really really good planning on uh, Crimson's part to bring the Scarf Jolteon just for that um, Swift Swim Mega Swampert uh, really threw Geo for a loop and uh, was able to finally get Crimson a win his second win it's been a while since he had that first one so Definitely, definitely a good game and uh, definitely well deserved. Yeah, another another thing I want to point out is that um, I think Crimson finally learned how to use for Alligator this week. That's true. He finally pulled it together with the Swords Dance Aqua Jet set, and that was just pressuring Geo way too hard for him to want to switch into anything. So that, I think that's the main reason that Jolteon got four kills this game. So incredible playing by Jolteon on the field, and uh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So let's let's get on to our last match of the week here. Yes, which is going to be the New York Mankeys versus the Cincinnati Loud Reds, and um, oh man, just such this match was just up and down for me because in the beginning it was just Movone seemed to have such control of the match with the Gliscor and the uh, Gastrodon there, and then just that DC happened where he didn't get the burn and he was going into Glade, and then Shady was kind of playing him with the Ice Punch there, and another match where we can't get a Scald Burn when we want to get Scald Burned, <laughs> so there's a nice theme of the week. You can't get yeah. Scald Burned when you want it. Yeah, basically. So, um... But other than that, I think after the DC, a lot of momentum changed once he got Scald Burned, and you kind of just saw Con Kelder putting up so much press pressure against Mulvone that um, Shady just took the upper hand, and basically <laughs> Sir Superior came in, got some Leaf Storms, and that was that, basically. Yeah. A couple things for me is... Uh... I was kind of surprised just by the way Movon played. He's been very consistent, very good 
you know, this entire season, and I feel like a lot of things just kind of I don't, fell apart or just didn't kind of work. Uh, I was really confused as to why he was trying to scald a Conqueror in the first place. Um, it's pretty common knowledge that he gets guts, and I mean, the fact that he got four scalds in a row without it getting burned that first time is incredibly... I mean, unlucky for Shady and, and kind of lucky for him because uh, you saw how much damage once that Conqueror was burned, it did more than half to, I believe that was a physically defensive Gastrodon. So if that first time, you know, that would have gotten a Scald burn, that entire match, I think, would have been gone even sooner. And yeah. then, I mean, also just after that, uh, Superior was just able to, you know, sweep up, you know, uh, killing the Fortress on entry and then outspeeding Manectric before Mega Evolved. That was a really questionable, you know, send in too. He had a Talonflame, didn't send it in right away. Kind of needlessly sacked off uh, two of his Pokemon. I understand the Fortress switch in not knowing that Superior would have Hidden Power Fire, but the Manectric one was really... It, it didn't make as much sense considering yeah. he had a Talonflame, but... The fact that he didn't just didn't go into Talonflame and pressure out the Superior really... It, it even had me going, like, what the heck are you doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's been our uh, recaps of everything. That was a 5-0 for the Mankeys, by the way. Yes. Great job for that big, big upset and uh, possibly pushing Shady more and more into that wild card spot. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I guess we're going to move on to League Leaders. Uh, yes? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, not moving since the beginning of the season, if I recall correctly. Weavile or the beginning of time. Still, yeah, Weavile is still in first place. <laughs> uh, 17 kills, 2 deaths, was not brought, brought this week, so it keeps its plus 15 differential, which is just insane. Yeah, just... Yep, so let's go to number two, which is Mega Pinsir, who was brought this week, but... Did not get a kill, bringing it farther down, and uh, it is sitting at 16 kills, 4 deaths, and uh, plus 12 differential. Yep, yep. And then uh, number 3, we have Mega Gardevoir, which wasn't brought, it's not going to be brought, this is probably going to be its final stat line here. 13 kills, 5 deaths, plus 8 differential, still remaining in 3rd place for now. Number 4, we have Crocodile, who, uh, how many kills did he pick up this week? That I'm, I'm was, oh, I that don't remember, was it question. two, three, oh, let me just look. Two, <laughs> it was two. It, oh. Two, two this week? Yes, two, uh, but it also died, so it only increased so its differential in, by one. Yep, so it's ten and three now, sitting at fourth on the ladder, uh, with a plus seven differential. Mm -hmm. So, on to, you want me to just go through Yeah, just the read the rest, rest of them yep. off, why not? So, number five, we got Mega Low Punny for the Real Morale. At um, 9 kills, 1 death, and plus 8 differential. Number 6, we have Hydreigon. With 9 kills, 2 deaths, se plus 7 differential. At number 7, we have Superior shooting up. At uh, plus 9 kills... Uh, at 9 kills, 3 deaths, plus 6 differential. At number 8, we have Jolteon who shot up this week. With uh, 9 kills, 5 deaths, deaths, and plus four differential. Number nine, we have Mega Sableye still sitting there at plus eight kills, three deaths, and plus five differential. And at number 10, we finally have Mew with eight kills, five deaths, and plus three differential. And then it sort of just goes on from there. So yeah, yep, that's yep. all. Yep, so that is your league leaders. And now we can move on to the... <laughs> conference uh, breakdown, which, here we go. Oh, mine are all separated. Here we go. So, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over the Diamond Conference really quick. Um, Utah Jasmine, uh, furthering its... its taking, taking the division lead here, furthering its... Uh, the distance here, with a 5-4 and four record, with a plus 10 differential. Uh, New Orleans Pelippers in second with that 4-5 and five record with plus 3 differential. And the Detroit Steel Wings uh, with 2-7 and seven and the minus 17 differential. Um, everything looks pretty set in terms of playoffs. Uh, Cooper has it uh, locked up unless I, I have no, no. something wrong here. I think if that's no, the differentials no. as they are, then it's completely locked up. There's yeah, no chance just... for John to get the wild card spot either. 
So it's just everyone plays for fun. <laughs> no, I think I think John still actually has a chance if Cooper were to lose very devastating next week, and John were to win very big next week, which That's is true. actually a. That's right. That's what I read. I forgot thing, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is a thing that could happen. It could. To be honest, it could really happen. So. Uh, yeah, I think it has to be a. On with the... uh, you can go over the Pearl Division. <laughs> Unless you don't have that. Okay. Um, no, I think I do have it. Yes. So we have the Rampardos, the St. Louis Rampardos, and Dan sitting at plus eight and. No, we have him sitting at eight <laughs> wins, one loss, and plus 18 differential. And then trolling behind him is uh, Shady, who's already locked up his wild card spot. So there's no chance for anyone in the Diamond Division to take that. At uh, plus six... Ah, I keep doing this. Six wins, <laughs> three losses, and plus 12 differential. And then at the very bottom, we have the Pyratatas. Every time I say that, I think, of a, I think of Pi... And then ratatas. Oh, uh, um, okay, yeah. I don't yeah. think of the same thing, but we'll, we're not going to go any further with that. We'll just agree to disagree. <laughs> that's fine. I like pie and I like ratata, so that's okay. fine. Okay. So he's sitting at one win, eight losses, and minus 26 differentials. So, so sad. very cut and dry in this division. Uh, it's basically just Dan overtook it. I yep. mean... Not much more to say, and Shady has the wild card spot, so you can move on to the Ruby division down yep. there. Everything there is locked up, and uh, so yeah, the Ruby division here, uh, the Cincinnati Loudreds are in first place with uh, seven wins, two losses, and a plus nine differential. Winnipeg Aqua Jets actually pretty close behind with six wins, three losses, and a plus four differential. And and then last, uh, Long Island Reggie Rockies are one and eight with a minus 18 differential. Um funny thing to note here is that Hank technically still has a shot to win the division um, if he wins and by, I think it would have to be like a 3-0 if, and if Malvin gets, loses, uh, you know, 3-0, I think Hank could actually take the division, uh, which is crazy because Malvin was looking to have a pretty big lead for quite a while, so, uh, but it's not out of reach. Yeah, yeah, Hank would beat him by differential there, Yeah, and that would possibly i mean hank's already locked up the wild card spot in there yeah pretty much um unless geo somehow comes out of negative differential but i don't see that happening he doesn't have enough wins you know so um yeah basically everything's cut up there but hank still has i mean either way mulvone has his playoff ride ticket you know what i mean yeah He's just the playoffs are set the ticket, basically everywhere go yeah so but I'm going to move on to the Sapphire Division, if okay, that's yep. okay with you. Yep, go for it. And in first there, we have the Real Maril at eight wins, one loss, plus 29 differential. Um, and then we have the San Francisco Giantes. I, I don't know why I can't <laughs> say that. And four wins, five losses, minus eight differential. And then we have uh, Milwaukee Sawsbucks at uh, two wins, seven losses, minus 17 differential. Now we're aware of um, we're aware of magnitude or Steve, as we like to call him, yeah. as he's forfeited his last two matches. We just wanted to say for this week, his match counted as a loss, and next week they'll hopefully add on his next loss. So yeah. that's just why we're saying two and seven. I know someone's gonna comment down below. Oh, but he's two and eight, and <laughs> yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, that answers that. And uh, speaking of that, we can move on to next week's matches. Uh, first one, just to clear out of the way, is that Magnitude was going to play uh, the St. Louis Rampardos and. and Dan, A drive. So, uh, assuming that that match does not take place, Dan will get the 3 0 victory. Um, and he already locked up the bye. So, it didn't mean a whole lot for him other than just, you know, just keep battling. Um, but that is going to go in, uh, in A drive's favor there. So, there's really not much to talk about for that match. Yep, yep. So, next one we have, I believe, is mm -hmm. the Giantes. Okay, I said it right this time. Versus the Loudrids. And. This is, uh, 
I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say Mulvone on this one. I mean Mulvone has just been playing good and it's weird that he's playing good, but with a lot of standard sets you're seeing and Geo just came off a loss from Crimson, and Geo has been playing ups and downs this season. You know, he's had his good wins, he's had his bad losses, but I just, I see, you know, Mulvone just kind of saying, hey, you know what, I gotta show him why I'm in the playoffs, and that's it. So, I'm going Mulvone on this one. Who do you have? I think I'm gonna go the opposite. I think I'm gonna have Geo taking this one. It's very close, very close, and I could be completely wrong. I think that there's going to be a lot, and this could still apply for Mulvone, but I still think that there could be a lot of the teams that aren't in the playoffs that still kind of want to set out to prove like why they're still in the GBA, and I think a lot of these coaches are just gonna be really prepping hard for this last match. And I think Gio's going to give it all he's got. He really understands how his team works now. Um, I was listening to him talk in his team breakdown, his GBA locker room video. He really understands how his team works, and I think if he puts a lot in a lot of preparation, preparation, which I'm sure he will, I think he could squeak, squeak out a victory and 500, so he doesn't even have a losing record in his first season, which would definitely be respectable. Um, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, next one you got. Yes, I do have the next one, which is a very interesting match between uh, the Pittsburgh Piratitas and the Long Island Reggie Rockies. Uh, both teams are 1-8. and eight. One team is unfortunately going to end the season 1-9. and nine. One team is going to get that second win, and it could really go either way. Ooh, I think <laughs> I think for me, I just have to go off of gut feeling with everything here. I really think that Nips is going to take this one. The way he battled against Hank just impressed me. And I think if he brings that um, style of battling and he applies that skill to to this match, I think he could be the one to get that second win. But it could really go either way. What do you think? Uh, I want to say Nips so bad, but I just... I know Tup is going to pull through this. I just, I have this gut feeling because every week you've been watching Tup and he's been either slowly, slowly improving or just having fun and somehow it works. And yeah. I feel like that's going to happen in this match where Tup is just going to have fun with it because it's his last match of the season. True. And he's going to bring some weird overly power team. I mean, you saw him bring that Sun team the one week and oh, then true. the next against Shady, right? And then yeah. the next week, Dan brought a Sun team and it totally destroyed Shady. So, <laughs> I mean, if Tup just knows how to pull it together and just kind of like have fun with it, but also kind of play good, I think he can really pull through and just beat the Reggie Rockies. He also has that trade pickup. Um with Amoongus and Tornadus T. So I want to see him work with those a little bit more before the season's over. Uh, hopefully yeah. he brings them, but I'm going to have yeah. to have Tup on this one. Yeah, one so. quick thing before we move on to the next one is, uh, I know another thing that could work in Tup's favor is uh, Nips likes to look at a lot of like standard moves that Pokemon can run and kind of what Pokemon normally do. And if Tup just goes completely against that and just goes with, like, the, the Cooper way of thinking where <laughs> you just bring things that just are out of your mind and don't make Sorcerer sense, act. that would throw Nips off so much, I think. Um, and I think that could just be a way to, A, have fun, and B, potentially use that as a way to, uh, to get a win. But uh, you want to go ahead and take away the uh, next match? Yep. Uh, next one we have, oh, God, we have the... Winnipeg Aqua Jets versus the New York Mankeys. And this one, I mean, Hank already has his wild card spot kind of, you know, cut and dry there. And so does Shady. But I feel like it's just a battle of the wild card teams right now. So, uh, it's just, I really want to say, I really, really want to say Hank. And actually, I'm going to say Hank because of the reason that... I really... Does Shady have anything that really wants to take a hit from Mega Pinsir? Not that I can see. <laughs> not that not that I can think of in my head right now. Yeah. Um, but it's just... Hank has been playing the best offense this season, in my opinion. Even though it's probably gotten... It's, well, it obviously got shut down by Cooper, because, 
you know, Cooper plays stall, and that's what Cooper does. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, offense doesn't beat stall. You have to know that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know what? I'm going to have to go with Hank on this one, just because I, uh, I really just... I don't know. I'm just gonna say Hank because Hank. That's why. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I was actually gonna go with uh, with a similar reasoning. I I love Shady. I love the way that he's been playing this season. Um, but yeah, Mega Pincer is a huge problem, and Hank has been really good at using switches and switch initiative to his advantage. I think more so than anybody else in terms of baton pass Umbreon and U turns and anything that he can do to get the the one v one matchup that he can, he will get. So I think, you know, if Hank wants to get Mega Pinsir in on a certain Pokemon, he's going to do that. And it's going to be hard for Shady to prevent that. So I think I'm going to lean towards Hank as well. Um, so, yeah. We're uh, going to have a lot of Shady people hating us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Don't do that. I'm sorry. Why do you I take back everything I said. No, I'm <laughs> anyway. Okay, so... Um... The, Second you got the last. next one, or is that me? Yep, I got this. Second, you got this. Second okay. to last match here uh, is uh, Mega Mogwai, the Ria Marill, taking on the Utah Jasmine. That, I am really, really excited for. Oh, um, no. You have... I'm so mad you got this oh, one. Oh my gosh, you have, you have <laughs> probably, I mean, easily, in my opinion, the best team builder and one of the best battles in the league against... Uh, Cooper, that I can't, like, I mean, he's also an incredible battler, but, like, how do you plan for him? Like, I don't <laughs> I don't understand how people have been able to plan for him all season, and I really want to see how Miguel plans for him uh, this week. It could go really either way. I, me personally, I don't see a reason to pick against Miguel. I, he is pretty close to being undefeated. He could have potentially been undefeated if his Statlin, you know, liked him more, but he wasn't I mean, <laughs> you know, so I have no <laughs> reason to pick against a almost undefeated team uh until you would give me a reason to do so. So I would I would go towards Miguel. All right. So I'm going to have to say Miguel also. And not for any other reason other than hashtag #return of waffles. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I don't mean the move. I mean, I want the damn dog back. So, Miguel, if you're listening to this and my predictions, I'm going to predict that Stoutlin gets out there. You pet your dog this time, okay? And it gets some damn kills on Cooper's team because it really, really can. So, I'm just going to throw that out there for you because I have Miguel all the way on this one. I'm sorry, Cooper, but... Choice Bandit Stoutland just puts in so much work against Cooper's team. If you really, really look at it, yeah. I mean, he has Dusknoir, but Crunch. He has Zapdos, but Return, Ice Fang, things like that. Does it get Ice Fang? I'm pretty sure it gets Ice Fang. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. I it think should it gets, if it doesn't. It gets such a good move pool, and the fact that Miguel has only brought it once this season and, you know... Yeah. It didn't do anything because it wasn't happy and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I just have Miguel with the with the Stoutland sweep. That's it. That's that's my prediction for that. Very fair. I would love <laughs> to wait and see to see if that happens. I need to see Return of Waffles. Hashtag Return of Waffles. <laughs> Spread it on Twitter, please. There you go. There you go. Hey, so, go ahead and take away for the last match. Yep. Last match we have here is going to be really important for John here. Um, we have the Detroit Steel Wings versus the New Orleans Pelippers. And, oh, this is such an important match for John. Because if what happens in the previous game that I predicted, then John needs to really win big this time around. He can't let Crimson pull him down into that 2-0, 1-0 win again. He needs to just come in, dominate... And destroy. So for that reason, I know John's going to come 100% prepared. And this is the reason why we said on the conference breakdown that it's very possible that John can still clinch uh, the number one spot in his league, his division. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to have to go with John on this one. I know he's going to prepare so hard this week, and I need to see Call Mine Sigalif. Please <laughs> stop bringing Focus Sash. I know it's a good way to get out of hacks, 
But Calm Mind Sigilyph is just a great Pokemon overall. And I think if he brings it and he just does some good work with it, he's going to see his potential and winning with a 5 or 4 oh maybe. So, yeah. who do you have for this one? I, I really would like to find a reason to disagree with you, but I don't really have any. So <laughs> I kind of also have to go with John and the New Orleans Pelipers. Um, I don't really know if Calm Mind Sigilyph is the way to go, only considering how much work Focus Sash Sigilyph did against Crimson just two weeks ago. Uh, I mean, of course, maybe you don't want to bring the same thing once, but if it worked that well, it might work again. Either way, yeah. I heard I heard the way John talked after his battle with Cooper. He, I think more than anyone, wants to end the season on the best note that he possibly can. And if he wins really big, this might not even be the end of the season for him. Um, so that's always something to consider. I think he's going to prepare more than he ever has before. He's going to put literally everything in this game and then some. And I, I just don't know if Crimson's going to be ready for that. Because I think I think just gonna is gonna come out swinging, and uh, I think he's gonna win pretty big this week just because of that. So, but uh, yeah, all right. So that has been uh, this week's uh, GBA recap for week nine. Hopefully, everyone has tolerated us enough to I don't know sit through this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been it's great it's been great being here. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And, I don't know, you have anything else to say? Uh, hashtag Return of Waffles. There you go. <laughs> so, hashtag <laughs> Return of Waffles. Spread it in the comments on Twitter, wherever you can use a hashtag, do it. And, uh, and yeah. don't kill us too much in the comments. Yes, that that's, as well. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> thanks so for he's been. Are we gonna do? Are we going to do the Ryquin Adam thing? I've been super gassy, you've been Slyro, and they've been awesome. Sure, except for you just did it, so. Oh, uh, okay. Bye. See ya. <laughs>